Um, today is B day, right? So no. Does it matter how far up and down we're talking? Not at all. Doesn't matter at all. We're talking left and right. So where, looking at this graph, are we from left to right? We're at, oh, right there, negative six. And then we're at positive what? Four, okay. Did it include negative six? No, it was an open circle, so parentheses. And then did it include four though? Closed circle, so it included four. Okay, so we put a bracket around what it includes. Is everybody clear on that? Any questions? Okay, all right, and range. Range, range is y value. So how far up and down we're looking. How far up and down, it doesn't matter how far left and right. Where are we on the bottom, the up to down, down to up? We're at negative four, you're awesome, good. And then we're going up to positive two. Did it include negative four? Yes, close circle, so we need to put a bracket. And then did it include positive two? No, so we put a parenthesis. How many of you got it right? How many of you got a, pretty much right, a little mistake here and there? How many of you learned what you did wrong? Just watching that. Awesome, that's why we're here is to learn when we make mistakes. So that's great. Good job, guys. Um, so if you tried for the most part on this and you got it pretty much right, you'll get pretty much full points, okay? Um, so let's continue. Okay, so today we're learning something that is really hard for a lot of kids. And you should have learned it in secondary two. We should have learned it in secondary two, but it's a hard concept, okay? It's factory. How many of you remember factory, a quadratic equation? How many of you briefly remember, okay, I learned that. I don't remember how to do it necessarily. You sat in front of me right now. How many of you remember learning it? Raise your hand. Okay, so you're going to have to pay close attention. There's a lot today to factory, okay? You're going to have to take detailed notes, but we have to work fast so we can get to a lot of examples. I'm not kidding. I'm really good at teaching factory. I'm awesome at teaching factory because I give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to factor. But there's a lot of instructions and a lot of things to consider. So you have to pay close attention today and close attention to the little details. The little details matter. So you have to take jujitsu notes tonight, like so quick, because we've got to get through this and get to the example. But if these steps I give you will help you factor. You will know how to factor when you leave my class. I can promise you that. If you follow these steps and you pay close attention. All right, let's go through this. Okay, so what, first of all, before we start factoring, I'm just going to ask you a question. What makes this right here, this function I have up here, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0, what makes it quadratic? x squared. Good. So we look at the highest degree, and that's how we know. So it's x squared. So remember how we were solving linear functions yesterday. Were we solving linear functions? It's because it was degree 1, right? Today we're going to be solving quadratic functions, meaning degree 2. Now, these are parabolas, so I, this is just a little aside. If we had an x-y chart, we had an x-y chart, we would have a parabola that looks something like this. Now notice, when we solve, when we solve these, we're going to get how many answers? Does anyone know? Two, and we can always know that for sure because we look at the highest degree. So if we look at this, we know the highest degree is two. We are going to have two solutions. Now with linear, it was degree one. How many solutions did we get? One, so it makes sense. Now what we're getting here, guys, just so you know what you're finding, is we're finding where it crosses the x-axis. Now notice it's crossing right there and right there, for example. Those are going to be what we find by some method. So we're finding where it crosses the x-axis. Those are the solutions we're finding. So some of you are like, I, don't, I know how to factor. I didn't know what it was for or what we were doing. Well, now you know. You're finding where it crosses the x-axis. And with the parabola, it's always going to cross twice, right? If it's shaped like that, you see how it's going to cross in two places. Okay, sweet. There are times when it can cross at one, but you'll get the answer twice. Like, for example, if something like that, it only would touch down right there, but you'll get the answer twice when you go through and simplify this. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Once again, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that's a big fancy word for something not so big and fancy. The highest degree is the number of solutions you'll get, so we better get two solutions. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so quadratics have this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we have to make sure it's set equal to zero. So if we're trying to solve a quadratic and it's not set equal to zero, we've got to get it set equal to zero. Once again, quadratics have the form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we're going to make sure it's set equal to zero. Is everybody okay with that? 
Now, A, B, and C are the numbers in front, the coefficients in front of our variables. So the A is going to be in front of the x squared always. The B is going to be in front of the x always. And C, C is our constant coefficient, which just means it's the number, the simple just number by itself. Does that make sense, everybody? They're just numbers, and we are going to use these things to factor. They matter. Okay. Okay, so you can solve a quadratic equation in many different ways. So we're going to learn a couple different ways to solve a quadratic. Today we're going to focus on solving by factoring. So we've learned how to factor. Well, what's the point of factoring? It's so that we can solve a quadratic equation. So today we're going to focus on factoring. Now note, not all quadratic equations are going to be factorable today. They're all going to be factorable because we're practicing factoring. But they're not all going to be factorable in the future. And we'll learn other methods later on. Um, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to take this quadratic equation. We're going to factor it down, and we're going to get it down to linear factors. So you're going to have a linear factor and a linear factor, two linear factors. Once we've broken it down into the two linear factors, we're going to split those linear factors apart. We're going to set them equal to zero and solve for x, okay? So that was like, whoa, what did you just say? I understand you're not going to get that until we practice it. Okay, so this is where you need to start taking notes. These are the step-by-step -step instructions. If you go through these every single time, you will be able to factor anything I give you as long as it's factorable. So this is where you have to write really quick because I can't spend tons of time. I wish I would have typed them up for you, but you need to have them for today. So try to write quick. If you need a shorthand, that's fine. But you need these steps. Um, also, while you're, I'm just going to say, some people have learned little tricks and stuff to factor. I don't teach it that way because then you don't know how to factor any, like you don't know how to factor anything that I give you. So some of you are like, oh, I know a trick, so I know how to do it way faster. I'm not going to teach you tricks. That's not math. I'm going to teach you the math. And then no matter what problem I give you, you'll be able to factor it in the future. And we're going to be doing way harder factoring later on. So if you know how to do this, you'll be able to do the hard factoring where the tricks don't work. So just... Stay with me today. Okay, so first of all, before we even start, before we even do the first step, it must be in standard form. So it has to be in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c in that standard form, which is equal to zero, and it has to be set equal to zero. Does everybody understand that? It has to be in standard form, and it has to be set equal to zero before we can even start. Then our first step, we're going to check to see from the very beginning, is there anything in common to start with? If so, we can pull it out. So is there anything that all three terms have three terms have in common that we can pull out from the beginning? If so, we're going to pull it out. Now you're going to ask yourself, once you pull that out, am I down to linear factors? Now you'll know what linear factors are when I show you in just a second. But am I down to linear factors? If the answer is yes, you'll set your linear factors equal to zero and solve. And if no, you'll move on to step two. So if yes, you'll set your linear factors equal to zero and you'll solve for x. If not, if you're not down to the linear factors, you'll move on to step two. Now I understand. Right now, you have no idea how these steps are working. I promise when we do some examples, you will. These steps are important, but I'm giving you the steps first. Okay? So don't be like, I didn't understand any of that, so I'm just going to zone out. When we start practicing them, you will. Mm, are we okay? Do I need to give you another second to keep writing? Okay, a couple more seconds. So just kind of try to shorthand, but get as much information as possible. Okay. And I guess I wouldn't mind if you wanted to take a picture of it. But I know I used to do that in college because my professors were just... And I'd be like, I need a picture of that before you erase it. So if you need to ever take a picture, I'm willing to let you do that. But you can also watch the videos, right? Okay, am I okay to go on? Next step. Okay, so let's say it's step two. So we have decided, no, there's nothing in common. We move on to step two. You're going to take, this is what you're going to do. It's a process. So you're going to say, what multiplies to be A times C, so what multiplies to be A times C, those two numbers, and adds up to be B. So once again, what multiplies to be, I'm going to change colors here, what multiplies to be a times c and adds up to be b. So I always set up, this is what you can set up for step two. You don't necessarily need to write down the words. I'm going to set up this little chart thing right here every single time. So I'm going to say to myself, 
Well, multiply to be A times C and adds up to be B. So then what I do, guys, is I multiply A and C together, those numbers, and it's going to give you a number that you're going to have right here. Then you're going to go through and list all the factors, meaning what multiplies to be that number. What things multiply to be that number, A times C. Once you've listed all the factors, you're going to go through them and say, do any of those factors add up to be B? You'll just go through and see if any of them add up to be B, and you'll cross them out. You're going to find some factors that add up to be B. You're going to make sure that they add up to be B, and then once you've found the factors that work for here and here, they multiply to be this and add up to be this, you know that these are your factors. So I always write off to the side when I figure it out. I say, so my factors, so my factors are this number and this number. They're going to be two numbers. Okay, now both must be true. Now once again, I understand that you're like, I don't get what you're saying here. I promise you're going to once we do our first example. Okay, get that down and then we'll move on to step three. Because once you've figured out those factors, you're done with step two. Here's the third step. Once you've found the factors, you're going to do the third step. I call the third step drop and break. I call the third step drop and break. And that's just a little thing I made up to help my students remember to do something, to drop and break. So what we're going to do for drop and break, this is important. What we're going to do for drop and break, we're going to drop down the front term, the front term, AX squared. We're going to drop down the last term, including the sign that goes with it. So we're going to drop the front term. We're going to drop the last term. Drop and break. And then we're breaking down the middle term here. This is the middle term, and we're going to break it down. Now we're breaking it down into the two factors that we just found in set two. What are we breaking it down into? The two factors that we found in set two. Drop and break. Okay, that's step three. Drop and break. Now, there's a little bit to drop and break. After you drop and break, after you drop and break, still in step three, I'm going to still consider it safe. Step three, we have to group. I'm not going to, I don't, didn't write that down because we'll see how it works. We're going to group the first two terms. We're going to group the second two terms. And then we're going to factor again. We're going to pull out what we can from each group. And then there's a safe haven, so you can check to know if you did it right. And I'm going to teach you this. I understand this doesn't make sense right now, but if you have the steps written down, it's going to help you. So you're going to check the safe haven. Once you've done this step and you've done the few things, you can check. I know I did this right, which is nice, because you don't want to get all the way to the end and get it wrong. So you can check and say, I am safe, and I'll teach you how you know. Okay, so you're going to check your safe haven. Once you know you're safe, you can pull the safe haven out, and your, that's your final factor. I understand this isn't making sense right now, but I want you to write down steps, and I promise it will once we start doing it. Okay, so final factor will be to pull out the safe haven, and then we're all we're there, 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 we're there. All we have to do is set it equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so is everybody still writing? A few people still writing here. I'll give you another second. Sorry. Okay. Anyways, um, Okay, so now we're looking at these two things. So the video missed it, but we'll have another example. So looking at these two things here, is that a linear, is that linear, this piece? What's the degree on it? One, so it's linear. What's the degree on x minus two? One, so it's linear. We're down to our linear factor. So all we have to do, guys, is set each of those equal to zero and solve for x. So we're going to set that factor equal to zero. And we're going to go off to the side over here, and we're going to set x minus 2 equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for x piece by piece in each of them. Awesome. That one was easy. So x is equal to 0. There's nothing else we can do. There's one of our answers. But over here, solving for x, what do I need to do? It's subtraction, so we'll end up subtraction, addition. So we'll add 2 to both sides. Over here, those add up to be zero. So we get x is equal to zero plus two, which is two. 
x is equal to 2. Our answers for this one was x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. Any questions? Okay, awesome. Let's do another one like that. And then we'll get to the good stuff. We'll get to the good stuff after that. So x squared is equal to negative 25x. x squared is equal to negative 25x. Before we can even start, we have to make sure it's in standard form and set equal to 0. So I need to fix this. Now I would always bring, if we have a positive x squared, I'd always bring this over this way. We could go the other way, but I would suggest keeping this a positive 1 in front. Okay, so how do we get this set equal to 0? Can we just float it over? No, what do we need to do? Add 25x to both sides. So on the left, then that leaves me with x squared plus 25x is equal to 0. Those add up to be 0. That was the point. We're in standard form now. You have to make sure it's in standard form. x squared is the highest degree, then 2x to the first is the next highest degree. Okay, we're now to our first step. Is there anything in common right there? that we can pull out. X, they both have an X. That is a true statement. Okay, so I'm going to pull out an X because they both have an X. Now once again, some of you are going to have to do this for a while. You had an X squared plus 2X. I'm going to write that on the side. You pulled out an X. So what is left? I'm going to put my parentheses in. Now if you have to do this for a while, just do it. I'm going to go back through and when I pulled out an X, what I really did was divide out an X. So X squared divided by X is X, and then we had 2x, we pulled out an x, so we're dividing out an x. So what's left when you do 2x divided by x? Oh, that was 25, wasn't it? Okay, I'll just add the 5 in there. Not a huge fix. Okay, so 25x divided by x. Plus 25. So left inside was that. x plus 25. Are we down to our linear factors? Yes. Okay, so now we'll set our linear factors each equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have x is equal to 0 from there. And then we also have x plus 25 is equal to 0. So now solving for x piece by piece, what am I going to do? Minus 25. So we get x is equal to negative 25. That's one of our answers. What's our answer over here? x equals 0. Okay. To wake you guys up, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to practice the ones on your worksheet like that. I was just going to keep going, but you guys need to wake up. And then we need to get to the good stuff. This was the easy stuff. We need to get to the good stuff. So take a second, and I'm going to have you practice problems. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's because there wasn't any like that because they were so easy. Never mind. We need to keep going. What was that? Yeah, perfect. Because we're moving on. Okay, we're moving on. I forgot that I opted to just take those off because they were so easy. We need to get to the good stuff. Okay, because we don't have time to, I guess, um, spend on those, but you guys were understanding the gist of those. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. Here we go. This is where something from the beginning will not factor out. So here we go. We have x squared is equal to 7x minus 12. x squared is equal to 7x minus 12. But I practice those for a reason because you will see those in the future. Okay, x squared is equal to 7x minus 12. Is this in standard form? It's not set equal to 0 either. Okay, can we just magically float these together? No, we've got to perform the correct operation to get from one side of the equation to the other. So I'm going to subtract 7x, and I'm going to oops, subtract 7x, because that was positive 7x, and I'm going to add 12 to both sides. Does everybody feel okay about me doing that in one step? Does everybody see how if you look at that, it's going to add up to be zero? Yeah? Okay, so we're all okay. I gotta do that to both sides though. Negative seven x plus twelve. So on the left here, on the left, let's write down what we have left. X squared minus seven x plus twelve is equal to zero. Do you have questions on how I did that in one step? If you don't ask, then it's your own fault. Okay, moving on. Okay, let's do our first step. Looking at this, is there anything in common? And I'm going to put a square around this so we can focus on it. Is there anything in common 
in x squared minus 7x plus 12. It has to be in all three things. No. Okay, so we're moving on to our second step. What was our second step? It was the what multiplies to be a times b and adds up to be b, right? Okay, let's go through and list out what is a. So a is in front of what? What is a in front of? x squared. What's in front of x squared? 1. So a is equal to 1. b is equal to, these are just the numbers in front of what they go with. So what is b? Negative 7. b goes with x. And then c is equal to what? 12. Okay. So now what we're going to do is what multiplies to be a times c and adds up to be b. So a times c. 1 times 12. What's 1 times 12? 12. What multiplies to be 12 and adds up to be negative 7. B is negative 7. Did you all follow what I just did? So now what I'm going to suggest, I'm going to, I can't squat down there. Okay, hey, what I'm going to suggest at this point, guys, is to, I'm going to bring this up so I have more room. You guys can follow better. Okay. So now what I suggest is going through and listing all the factors of 12. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times what is 12? 4. And then if I continue here, 4 times what is 12? 3. I already have that one listed, right? So that's called wrap factor around. So do you see how we have all the factors of 12 listed? Let's go through and see which ones could possibly add up to be negative 7. Could 1 and 12 ever add up to be negative 7. Those are not our factors. Moving on. Could 2 and 6 ever add up to be negative 7? Moving on. 3 and 4, could they add up to be negative 7? But what would need to happen for those to add up to be negative 7? They both have to be negative. Okay, well let's check. Does that work on the right? Is negative 3 times negative 4 positive 12? Oh, it works over there? Sweet. Does negative 3 plus negative 4 equal negative 7? Check. It works on both sides. Those are our factors. So I write my factors. You don't have to write it as long as you know what you're doing. My factors are negative 3 and negative 4. Is everybody okay with that? Any questions? Okay, so now we're to the third step. We're to the third step. We're going to drop and break, drop and break. So originally we had, from the original problem, sorry, I need to get rid of From the original problem, we had x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. So now we're to the drop and break. What you're going to do is drop, first drop. We drop down the end term here, x squared. We drop down the positive 12 here. Drop and break. We've done the drop part. Now we're going to do the break part. We're breaking down negative 7x into our two factors. We're rewriting, we're breaking negative 7x into two factors. These are the two factors. So it's not going to be negative 3. Pay attention to this. It's not going to be negative 3. This was x's. It's going to be negative 3x's. And then it's going to be also negative 4x's. Does everybody see how I use negative 3 and negative 4 are two factors to rewrite negative 7? Does everybody see how negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7? Same thing, but it's broken down. Does that make sense? Okay. If you have questions on there, ask, because if not, I'm moving on. I would love to answer them. Okay, so now what you're going to do, throw parentheses around the first two terms. Throw parentheses around the second two terms. Everybody do that on your paper. And then you're going to focus that on it piece by piece. So let's focus on this first piece here. What's in common in the first piece? X. So we're pulling out an X. What's left in the parentheses once we pull out an X? X minus 3. Questions on how I got that part. Okay. Now I'm focusing on the next thing here. I'm going to focus on this. Negative 4x plus 12, what's in common? A 4. And one other thing, this is a little side note, you're right, they both have a 4. If you ever have a negative in the very front of your parentheses, you're going to pull out a negative with 
the factor you're pulling out. So not only do they have a 4 in common, they have a negative 4 in common. So we're going to pull out negative 4. That's only if the negative is in the front. If the negative was back here, we wouldn't do anything with it. But since the negative is out front here, we're going to pull out the negative with what we have in common. So we're pulling out negative 4. Now if we pull the negative 4 out of negative 4x, what's left? x. If we pull a negative 4 out of positive 12, what's left? Careful. Negative 3. Good. Or just do 12 divided by negative 4, which is negative 3. Now right there, does everybody see how I have x minus 3 and x minus 3 in common? That's our safe haven. We've done this right. If you get something different, you've done something wrong. Safe haven. That's our safe haven. We've done this right. Whew, all that work wasn't in vain. Okay, so now what you're going to do is pull the safe haven out. We have an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. It's in common. We're going to pull it out. So I pull out an x minus 3. So if I pull out an x minus 3, I pull out our safe haven, and it's gone. We pulled it out. What was left? x and minus 4. So left was x minus 4. And we're down to our linear factors. Phew, hallelujah. We are almost finished. Does that make sense so far though? Okay, now we'll set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve. So we have x minus 3 is equal to 0. We have x minus 4 is equal to 0. And in each step, in each case, we're going to solve for x. Those are our two answers. So here, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So x is equal to 3. And here, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. x is equal to 4. We got two answers, and we're done. I went really slow on that one. The next one will go a little bit faster. So that was like, wow, that was slow. But I wanted to make sure we all understood where I was going. Did it make sense, at least? Yeah? Now, yeah, it's going to take some time to remember every little step and those things. But if you follow those steps, you will not get it wrong. Okay? Okay, let's do another example, and then I'll let you work for a while. Okay? Please ask this time if you had questions and you didn't dare ask, because I promise you, if you have those questions, other people do too. So it's not a big deal to say, hey, where did you do this from? Okay, so let's look at this one. X squared minus 35 is equal to 2X. X squared minus 35 is equal to 2X. Is this set equal to zero and in standard form? No, let's hurry and fix it. Let's quickly fix it. So we're going to subtract 2X from both sides. Now it's super important to put it in standard form. That's where a lot of people mess up. They don't put it in standard form. You have to put it in standard form. So standard form means highest degree to the lowest degree. So we have x squared minus 2x, if we're putting it in standard form, minus 35, and now it's equal to 0. And now we can begin. First of all, looking at those three terms, is there anything in common from the beginning that we can pull out? Dang it, it's going to be a longer one. But that's okay, we know how to do it. So no, nothing in common in those three things. So we'll move on to step two. Step two is what multiplies to be a times c and adds up to be B. I always make my little chart. What is A? What's A, guys? One. Yep. And B is negative two. And C is negative 35. Questions on where I got those? So what multiplies to be A times C, which is one times negative 35, and adds up to be B? Negative two. So once again, I would suggest listing all the factors. So once you get good at this, you'll be able to just see the factors. But for now, let's list them. 1 times 35. Now, if you didn't know the factors, you could take 35, divide it by 2. If it divides evenly, you'll put it down, right? So 35 divided by 2, do we get a whole number? You should have your calculators ready to go. 35 divided by 2, you don't get a whole number, so it's not a factor. 35 divided by 3, is it a factor? Is 3? No. Moving on, 35 divided by 4. Nope, it's a decimal. 35 divided by 5. Okay? 5 times what? 7 and then 6. 35 divided by 6. No. And 7. 35 divided by 7. Fine. We already listed that, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and see which ones add up to be negative 2. 1 and 35, that'll never add up to be negative 2. Because 5 and 7 add up to be negative 2. But which one would my, would my negative need to be with? Negative 7. Let's check to make sure. 
does negative 7 times by 5 equal negative 35? Okay, and then once again, 5 plus negative 7 truly does equal negative 2. It works in both cases. I promise there will be some that work over here that don't work over here. So, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Okay, so our factors are positive 5 and negative 7. So now we're to step 3, drop and break. Drop and break. So originally we had x squared minus 2x minus 35 is equal to 0. Drop and break. We're going to drop down our end terms. So drop down x squared. Drop down negative 35. And then we're going to break down the middle term. I need to see further down. Where did my page extend go? Okay. Okay. So we're breaking down the middle term into our two factors, which were positive 5 and negative 7. You have to not forget the x's. We were talking x's. So we're going to have positive 5 x's and negative 7 x's. Everybody following me. Drop and break. Questions before I move on? Okay, we're going to group the first two terms. We're going to group the second two terms. <coughs> And then we're going to focus in groups here and factor those groups. So looking at this group right here, looking at this group right here, what do we have in common? X, we pulled out an X out of that group. What's left inside? X plus 5, right? We pulled an X out of that. And that, that leaves us with X plus 5. Everybody okay with that? So if I pull out an X out of that group, then if I pull an x out of x squared, that leaves me with x. If I pull an x out of 5x, that leaves me with 5. <coughs> Are we okay with that? Moving on to my next group here. What do we have in common? Good. I'm glad you said negative 7 because we have a negative in front here. That's the only time we'll pull out a negative with it. So we're going to pull out a negative 7 because they both divide by negative 7. <coughs> So what's left inside? If we pulled out a negative 7 out of negative 7 x, what's left right there? X, and if we pulled out a negative 7 for out of negative 35, we get positive 5. Okay, let's check. These have to be exactly the same, signs and all. Are we safe? Are we safe? Safe haven. They're the exact same, we're safe. So pull out the safe haven. So we're pulling out x plus 5. It was in common, so we're pulling it out. So that means it's gone. We pulled it out. And left was x minus 7. x was left and minus 7 was left. Any questions on that? And we're done for linear factors. So now we'll set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So setting each of those equal to 0 and solve. So we have x plus 5 is equal to 0. x minus 7 is equal to 0. And in each case, solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 5. And I'm going to add 7 to both sides, add 7. So we get x is equal to positive 7. Okay. Do you need another example, or do you feel like, yeah, I have a sex, I'm getting it, I want to try it by myself. So raise your hands if you need another, or if you want to try it by yourself, how about? Raise your hands if you want to try it by yourself right now. Okay. Quite a few. Okay, let's give her a try, and then I can always bring you back to me and do some more in just a second. So I'm going to have you give her a try. And then I'll bring you back to me in a second and we'll do a couple, we'll do another example or two. So I would start with problems because I didn't do an example like problems one through five. I would start with problem number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we'll, I'll pull you back to me in just a second. I want to give you the opportunity though to practice. So you can do problems six through twelve and then I'll bring you back to me in just a second, okay? Let's get going. Here we go. So looking at this one, x squared plus 4x plus 3. You need to pay attention to the little details. Some of you couldn't even really start. So we need to watch really carefully and be paying close attention and asking questions if you don't understand. So first of all, this was already in standard form. Am I correct? Okay, so let's just begin. Is there anything in common from the beginning that we can pull out? No. Does everybody see how no? Okay, so now we're doing... What multiplies to be A times C and adds up to be B. Now, once again, A, B, and C are the numbers, the numbers in front of 
these things here. So the constants, the numbers in front of x squared, x, and this over here. So what is a? If you don't know, then you're not saying it, and I'm not going to move on. What is a? 1. It's in front of x squared. a is always in front of x squared. Nice. Quadratics have the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is 1, b is what? 4, and c is what? 3. So now we're doing what multiplies to be a times c, what multiplies to be a times c, and adds up to be b, and adds up to be 4. Questions? Please ask. Okay, let's list out the factors. 1 times 3. Those are the only two factors that multiply to be 3. Is that correct? <clears throat> okay, we need it to add up to be 4. <clears throat> What's my time on both of those? Positive. So we have a positive 1 and a positive 3. That works over there. Positive 1 plus 3 doesn't work over here. Is 1 plus 3 truly 4? So our factors are 1, comma, and 3. Our factors are 1 and 3 that we're going to use. So now we're going to go to step 3. Step 3, which is drop and break. So step 3 is drop and break. So we're going to write down, I'm going to write down the original problem real quick. x squared plus 4x plus 3. We're going to drop is equal to 0. We're going to drop the n terms down. So that is x squared plus, oh, so sorry. x squared, we drop that n term down. And we're dropping down positive 3. And we're breaking down our middle term here. Oh, that's a 4x, too. I'm rushing. So 4x. So we're breaking down our middle term here. We're rewriting that middle term as these two things. That's a 1x, that's a 3x. So we're putting it in here. So plus 1x and plus 3x. Do you have a question? Yes. Such a great question. I'm so glad you asked. It does not matter the order you put it, the breakdown part, the breaking part. We could have actually put 3x and then plus 1x. And once we start pulling out things that are in common, um, and we get, well, what when we break it down, our linear factors are going to look a little bit different, but our final answer will be the same. So as long as you're doing it correctly, you can actually flip those and keep going. Okay? Good question. Such a good question. Okay. At this point, we throw in our parentheses around the first two terms. We throw in parentheses around the second two terms. So looking at this first group, what do we have in common? An x squared plus 1x. An x, and we pulled out an x, so what's left? x plus 1. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to change colors. Um, in 3x plus 3, what's in common? Positive 3, so we're pulling out a 3. And left is what? x plus what? We pulled a 3 out of 3, guys. What do we get? Are we safe? Safe haven is the same. We're safe. So we're going to pull out our safe haven. So I'm going to do it up here. So I'm pulling out my safe haven, which is x plus 1. So it's gone. We just pulled it out. What is left? x and plus 3. That's a positive 3. Good. And then are we done for a linear factor? Okay, set those equal to 0 and solve for x. x plus 1 is equal to 0. x plus 3 is equal to 0. And piece by piece solve for x. Subtract 1 from both sides. x is equal to negative 1. Subtract 3 from both sides. x is equal to negative 3. Questions? We're going to do another one. We're going to do another one. These just come with practice. They really do. They'll get faster. You really will get faster. But this shouldn't look new to you. Like you should have definitely, definitely, 100%, I know for a fact that you should have learned this last year. Okay. But if not, that means you're going to have to make up for it by coming to get help during cat time, after school, watch the videos, get caught up. Let's do one that looks like this. We have x minus 7 times x plus 6 is equal to 0. Looking at that. Are they already in linear factors? Woo! Easy. We set our linear factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So we set x minus 7 equal to 0. We set x plus 6 equal to 0 and solve for x piece by piece. They were already broken down for us. That makes me happy. So we add 7 to both sides. So x is equal to 7. 
And then I'm going to subtract 6. So x is equal to negative 6. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you practice that and because there is no way in heck that we're going to get to that second part. So you guys need to start practicing that. So these the problems that you have to finish are problems 1 through 12. 1 through 12. You have to have those finished by 2 marks. 1 through 12. If you can do more, by all means. By all means. If you can do more, by all means. You should really technically be able to do all of this. 